Glaze application seems like it should be simple. Just get the glaze on the piece, right? Well, yeah, things have never seemed to work out the way you want them to. Just like your relationship with your family. There's a lot hiding under the surface and we need to talk about to have a healthy relationship with your glazes. We're gonna talk about all the things that are going on in your glaze application and how to make the most of the glazing process to make your glazes happy, healthy, and well-adjusted. Let's have a glaze application therapy session today in the workshop. lots of aspects of our glazes we don't have any control over. The chemistry, the materials, the materials chemistry, but there are some aspects of our glaze that we have a lot of control over, yet we completely ignore. And simply paying attention to them will make our glazing lives better. So what do we have control over? Water content. There are two kinds of people in ceramics, those who weigh their water and those who don't. Water weighers, you are my people. You know where it's at and what really matters in life. The rest of you, you're the reason why Matt drinks. Seriously, it's time to get your act together. Do you want to keep living in the studio down by the river or do you want to have butt kicking glazes? Because winging your water content or just judging it by how it coats your finger is going to get you a one way ticket to the other side of the ceramic tracks. Oh, no. Weighing water is a huge deal. We can and will make videos about water content, but the first thing you need to know is that you must measure your water. You should treat the water in your glaze like any other ingredient and have your water content in your recipe and weigh out your water every time you batch your glaze. The next thing to know is that there's no such thing as the correct water content. Each and every glaze needs a different amount of water. Some glazes need 50% water, some might need 150% water, and that's fine. There's no correct amount. But once you know what you like in a glaze, you should batch that same amount every time. Look at these two. Both glazes have 50% water, and the one on the left is like yogurt, and the one on the right is perfect for us. Now these two. They have 150% water and one is perfect and the other is thin like milk. The reason is because of the materials. This one has zinc in the recipe and it makes it so the glaze is super thick unless it has a lot of water. This brings up one of the concepts of working with glazes that you may have heard of, specific gravity. And the most interesting thing about specific gravity is that everything you know is wrong. I know that's a bold statement, but let me ask you a question. What is the viscosity of that glaze? Do you know your viscosity? Don't know what viscosity is? That's the problem. Specific gravity is kind of a useless value if not paired with viscosity. Why? Let's take a step back and look at specific gravity. What is specific gravity? It tells us what the proportions of water to dry material in a glaze is. It's basically the same thing as density, a combination of mass and volume. We use it because it helps us keep the application of our glaze consistent, as glazes can be too thick or too thin or change over time. Specific gravity is one tool that helps us keep the glaze consistent and it's very helpful, but it's not a complete picture. In comes viscosity. Viscosity is another metric that we have to use together with specific gravity to get a picture of a glaze's wet performance. Viscosity tells us how a glaze flows, which is very important on how to work with a glaze. Now, let's look at honey. Honey is known to be thick and slow moving. Honey has a specific gravity value of 1.4. That's grams per cubic centimeter. Here is cold honey. It's very viscous and thick. It pours very slowly and I get a thick application. But here is honey from the same batch that I've heated and it flows very easily and I get a very thin coating. These two honeys have the same specific gravity of 1.4 
and they have the same amount of material and the same volume, but they have very different viscosities and that affects how the honey coats the dipper. Well, our glazes are exactly the same. The specific gravity is important, but as we care about how it applies, we also need to watch our viscosity. So let's measure both. Specific gravity first. So what you're gonna need is something that measures volume and something that measures mass. What we like to use is a 60 ml syringe and a digital scale, which we'll show you in a minute. But we also have this cool little cup that takes the measurement very precisely. This cup is great because there's no guessing on the volume reading. You just fill it up so the liquid comes out the hole on the top and it's a perfect 100 milliliters. Some people like to use a graduated cylinder and that's okay, but it would be my last choice as reading the volume is not that precise. What I really don't recommend is a hydrometer. They're kind of useless for ceramics and they're fine for brewing beer and other low specific gravity applications. When you have something that has a high specific gravity and thick, it's not precise and they're a waste of money. Taking a specific gravity measurement is easy. Put your vessel on the scale, tear it to remove its weight from the measurement, fill it up with your specific volume, I like 50 milliliters, and weigh it again. The calculation is easy. It's just mass divided by volume. This glaze weighed 75 grams and we filled it to 50 milliliters, so 75 divided by 50. So this glaze has a specific gravity of 1.5. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now let's take the viscosity of the same glaze. Viscosity is a little trickier and you need a unit tasking tool. And this tool is one of these. It's called a Zon cup. With a Zon cup and a stopwatch, you can master your viscosity. It's just a cup with a hole in it. And the way it works is simple. You fill the cup all the way up, then you pull it out and let it drain. And that's it. The rate of which it drains is the viscosity. Now to get a measurement, when you pull it out, you start a stopwatch. And when the stream breaks, you stop the watch. The time it takes to drain is your measurement. When you look for Zon cups, you'll find that they come in different numbers, one through five. We like to use a number two. The numbers refer to the diameter of the hole. Smaller numbers are smaller holes and larger are larger holes. Makes sense, doesn't it? Technically, you can use any size you want, but they are prescribed based on the viscosity of your liquid. You see, thinner materials like water will drain really quickly through a number five. And low viscosity materials will take forever to drain in a number one. So we cater to our materials. We found that a number two is best for glazes and it should take around 30 seconds to drain. One thing to watch out for is that number two is harder to find. Anything below that will drain too slowly and anything higher drains too quickly. So there's also a tool out there called a Ford cup and they're basically the same thing, but we prefer the Zon cups. And now we have our two metrics, specific gravity and viscosity. So thanks for joining us. And remember to leave a comment below and like and subscribe and see you all next time in the, oh, oh, wait, wait a second. We've received a comment already? Wait, that's strange. We haven't even published it yet. Dummy. Oh, oh, Matt, that comment's for you, Matt. Hey. Dear dummy, those are just numbers. Are they supposed to mean something to me? Now that's a great question. And the answer is no. Those numbers mean nothing without context. And what is that context? It's how you like your glaze. As we were discussing, specific gravity is a value that really doesn't mean much because there's no correct answer, as it will change based on the materials you use, but also more importantly, how you like to work with your glazes. You see, specific gravity and viscosity are more of a long-term glaze maintenance. Keeping your glaze application the same every time you use it is one of the best gifts you can give yourself to improve your relationship with your glazing. But first thing to do is to mix a batch of your favorite glaze and work with it to determine how you like it. We like to do this by mixing up a large batch. Now we've got a 10,000 gram batch of our glaze right here. And first we're gonna mix with a minimal amount of water. So let's start with a conservative amount of water, say about 5,000 grams. We're gonna mix these together in a quick montage. 
now we've got a really thick gloopy glaze, but we're not going to do anything about it. That's right, because glaze needs to age. You see, there are often materials in a glaze that when mixed with water, make the glaze flow better. Generally, that material is sodium, and we call that a dispersant. But the reaction doesn't happen right away. It usually takes about three days for the chemical reaction to happen. So we'll be back in three days. Now that the glaze is aged, we can see that it's thinned out a bit, which is great. It's also why we don't want to adjust the water before we let the glaze age. But the glaze is still too thick. So now we're going to add more water until we find the glaze flowing how we like it. When we do this, make sure to measure the water you're adding. Let's start with adding in a thousand grams at a time until we find the glaze the way we like it. Now, there we go, 3,000 more grams. So that means that when we mix this glaze, we want to batch with 8,000 grams of water every time. We need to take those specific gravity and viscosity measurements. Now, you should put those values on the outside of your bucket, along with the name, the temperature, and your recipe, because now we enter the time when specific gravity and viscosity are gonna shine. So, hypothetical situation. Say you've been using this glaze for a while, or even more importantly, say this is a large batch of glaze in a public studio. As that glaze gets used, that water content is gonna change. As people open the lid, leave it off, as they dip pots in and out, the water content is gonna drop. But how do we get back to where the glaze works best? That's right, specific gravity and viscosity. And specific gravity and viscosity keep your glaze application consistent over time. Every now and then in a public studio or whenever you come back to a bucket of glaze that you haven't used all that often, check the specific gravity and viscosity you'll find that oftentimes it changes. And that's gonna change your application. You know those three second dips you've come to rely on months ago? Well, today it's gonna give you a much different application. What to do? Well, changing specific gravity is easy. The majority of the time, unless someone's been adding water and not telling you, specific gravity is only gonna go up. That is because the glaze is gonna lose water over time. Evaporation, bisque absorption, being the biggest offenders. And that's easy to fix. Just add water. It's just that easy. How much water is hard to say, as you don't know how much water was lost or how much glaze is left. But check that specific gravity and see how it compares to the original. Add some water, mix, and check again. Be conservative with how much water you add, as you can add it, but you can't take it out. But that is okay. Check what you have and compare it to the original. If the viscosity has risen and gotten thicker, we can fix that. And if the viscosity has dropped and gotten thinner, we can also fix that. Viscosity is not like specific gravity, and we can adjust it up and down. To do that, we need two different materials. Darvan will thin a glaze out and decrease the viscosity, and Epsom salt solution will thicken a glaze and increase the viscosity. Let's thin it out first. Darvan is what we call a dispersant, which in its simplest explanation makes water wetter. What I mean by that is that by adding a few drops of this chemical, will make the glaze flow, decreasing its viscosity without adding any additional water. It makes water wetter. This is what is commonly used in casting slips to reduce the total amount of water needed. Darvan is a product that's commonly used in the US and you can commonly find Darvan 7 and Darvan 811 at your ceramic supply store. They do the same thing, it's just that 811 is more concentrated. We like to use 811 in our studio. Dispex is what you'll find in a lot of the rest of the world, and it's literally the same chemistry as 811. Sodium silicate is what we've used historically. It works fine, and it's cheaper, and if that's what you have, it's fine. Using it's simple. Add a few drops, mix it, and check the viscosity. Again, specific amounts are impossible to recommend, but with a little trial and testing, you'll find the right amount. But you should be adding by the drop, as a little of this goes a long way. If your glaze viscosity is too low, we can thicken it. 
That is by using an Epsom salt solution. Epsom salt is a coagulant and a few drops will thicken your glaze, increasing its viscosity. The Epsom salt we're using are the same you can buy at the pharmacy for soaking your feet. Pretty great, huh? But we don't want to use it as the crystals as it is sold. We need to make a super saturated solution. That means we have to dissolve it absolutely as much Epsom salts into our water as possible. And that amount is 110 grams of Epsom salt to 100 grams of water. Mix those together the night before and let them dissolve. When you come back, you'll find that there's some crystals at the bottom and that's okay as that means the solution is super saturated. Now, you can add a few drops of this to your glaze and you will see it thicken right up. These steps are what all glaze professionals do. When I was a glaze designer in the tile industry, we did exactly this to all our glazes. And not too long ago, we visited Fiesta Wear, the largest dinnerware manufacturer in the US. And they confirmed these are the only things they do to prepare their glazes for production. Batch, mix, age, measure, and adjust. And that's all it takes to keep your glaze application its best. Know your desired water content, specific gravity, and viscosity, and mean, you'll be able to maintain that glaze over time, and it will work. Remember, a happy glaze is a healthy glaze. It may take some trial and error to get your glazes dialed in just right, but with a little patience and these techniques, you'll be well on your way to a more fulfilling relationship with your glazes. Just like a good therapist might recommend cutting out toxic people from your life, sometimes your glaze needs a little intervention too. If a glaze is constantly causing you trouble, maybe it's time to move on and find a new one. There are plenty of fish, I mean, I mean glazes in the sea. But for most glazes, a little TLC and some understanding of water content, specific gravity and viscosity can go a long way. So next time you're in the studio and your glaze is acting up, don't despair. Grab your tools, channel your inner glaze therapist and get ready to create something amazing. Thanks for stopping by the workshop, everyone. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, give us a like, and show us your glazes on social media. Please consider joining us on Patreon where we have tons of extra educational content. Or if you really want to understand how your glazes and clay bodies work, take one of our online classes or workshops at ceramicmaterialsworkshop.com. And we'll see you next time in the workshop.